Basically, it's a semester long job interview. Yeah. Hey everyone, welcome back. Fresh on the heels of last week's video to student teachers. I actually thought of 10 more things that I wanted to tell those folks before they head into their very first classrooms. So today's video is all for the new folks. I actually wrote down my list of 10 things because I cannot remember all of that. So I'll be glancing down as we go, but let's just jump in because I think this video might be a long one. Okay, so first up, I want my new student teacher friends to keep an open mind. Um, I remember back in 1997, yes, when I went through, um, first off, but you don't start student teaching right away, right? So they're going to get you into different schools, and you're going to have a look around, and you'll do your like observation rounds. And I remember they had us keep journals of everything, and I was so judgmental back then. I was like, wow, like mean. Like I would see things, and we we're not supposed to, we were supposed to be a fly on the wall. We weren't supposed to interact. We weren't supposed to roll up our sleeves and work with students. We were just observing what was happening in these different schools. And I remember not having a lot of um, empathy for the teachers who were there, which is a shame because now on the other side of it, there's a lot going on. For the most part, teachers are hardworking. Their hearts are huge and definitely in the right place, but they're doing a really difficult job with very few resources and really overcrowded classrooms for the most part. So, new folks, when you're in those people's classrooms who have very graciously allowed you to come in and have a look around, definitely notice the things that need fixing because you're part of that solution, but also try to just be kind as you're observing. Uh, most folks are doing the best they can, so just keep that in mind. Like, keep an open mind and try not to be super judgmental. I know it's hard because uh, you're raring to go, um, and you would be better than I was in that situation for sure. Sure. Uh, tip number two, uh, good teaching, well, just teaching in general, is an art more than a science. And so a lot of times I get questions from folks and they're looking for the magic formula to solve you know, problem X. If you just do Y, then this will be the solution. And teaching just isn't that. Um, we're all individuals, we're humans, and we're teaching humans. And so there's so many variables at play um, that something that works for me, a technique that works for me in my classroom, might not work for you in your classroom because of my personality and your personality. So you have to know that you're gonna get like the basic tools during student teaching, but how you're going to use those tools or what you're going to add to those techniques is going to be all you. And that's part of the art, the beauty of what you're going to be creating in your classrooms. Um, a friend of mine is an art teacher, Michael Doyle, back at Amador. Um, and I remember we were sitting around talking one time as part of our professional learning community. Um, and he was talking about how visitors come into our classrooms and they see this well-oiled machine and they think, oh, teaching's super easy, right? Like uh, anybody can teach. Look, the kids just sit there and they do as they're told. But the reality is, is that there's a million and one invisible things that those visitors don't see that that teacher has done to create that smooth environment. And so, just know that it's going to take you a long time to kind of get to that level, and that's okay. You're an artist learning basic techniques, and then you'll add more as you go. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, tip three, uh, use the materials that your mentor teacher gives you for sure, just as you're directed, but then also you should be bringing something to the table. So as a mentor teacher, whenever I have a student teacher, um, I do it for a couple reasons, because I want to give back, I want to help grow the profession, I like working with young people, I have extra time on my hands not lately uh, but you know there's lots of reasons but one of them is also I want to grow I want to learn from the student teacher you guys are all the fresh studies are in your minds all the fresh techniques that us older folks don't have time to dig into I want to learn from you too so it's kind of a dance right because there's egos involved um, and you definitely want to like take what's offered and use it and see if it fits for you. But then also you need to bring something to the table also. We're not just spoon feeding you everything. You're a professional, you have ideas. So you wanna kind of like blend those things together as you're creating your style. Number four, um, you are there for the kids. It's always about the kids. Make their time great and useful. Um, but also do keep in mind that you could do things to make your mentor teacher's life easier. So you need a recommendation from this person. So you want to like do extra. Um, if you see this teacher is swamped with prep, 
Um, maybe you could offer, you know, oh, hey, you had, you know, this thing was successful that you tried. Or if you see that there's a huge grading load, like she has a lot of essays that have come due, volunteer to grade one stack. You know, hey, I need more practice. Would you mind if I graded this stack of essays for you? You will be that teacher's favorite person. So um, just volunteer, do things to, to make that person's life easier because they're giving up a lot of time to help you grow. And so you could definitely take a little bit off their shoulders also. Tip number five. Um, unasked and without even like mentioning it, I would start, if I were a student teacher, part of my practice is calling parents. I'm super impressed when a teacher reaches out to me as a parent, um, and yet a lot of teachers just don't do this. And I think that we're intimidated that we're gonna kind of open up a hornet's nest of issues, but really, whenever I reach out to parents, they are so grateful. And don't just call the parents of the kids who are struggling or giving you a hard time. You definitely should reach out to the parents in those cases too, but also call the parents of the kids who are doing great and just love on them a little bit. Those parents rarely hear from teachers because we're so busy, but if you make it part of your practice to reach out and call parents with positive and, you know, maybe not so positive or encouraging phone calls, I'd say do two or three a week. You'll feel great and you'll impress your mentor teachers who see that you see the value of reaching out to community. So that's one asset that I don't think we use enough um, and that's that good communication with parents. Um, all right, number six, uh, attend a couple of out of class activities on campus each month. So go to the football game, um, chaperone the dance. Um, if a kid is in a recital um, and you hear about it and you're invited, you know, go. Like do things on campus so that your students can see a different side of you and that you can see a different side of them. It really helps build the fabric of your community. And if you think you want a job on that campus, um, co-sponsor a club, like become like assistant yearbook advisor. You know, do things that are going to make you um, definitely part of it because there's a lot more to school than just the four walls of your classroom that you're teaching each day. There's, there's a whole rich thing going on in most campuses. So do your best to get involved in those things. All right, number seven is all about emotions and know that you're gonna have some extreme ones this year. You just gotta laugh at yourself. You gotta know that you're gonna be nervous. Um, my friend Stacy, who went through student teaching with me back in 97 and we taught next door to each other for years, she has this great line and she tells kids when they're feeling nervous, either before a speech or she does competition civics. So before a big like competition part of her pep talk to these kids as their coach is and I use this all the time with people is if you're feeling nervous you got those butterflies in your stomach that's a good thing that means you care about doing well and you're gonna focus that energy and do well and the same thing is for you student teacher if you're nervous before you're about to give a lesson that means you put your heart into it and what a wonderful thing that is so feel the nervous like that's good that means you care and you're gonna do a good job because of it um, also in terms of this whole emotions thing you're gonna be exhausted you just need to prepare yourself for that. In my student teaching, um, it was before I was married, before I had kids, so I had a little more free time and flexibility. I would get home around 4.30 in the afternoon after school and just smack, crash on the couch, and I would just sleep hard for like an hour. And then I would get up and I would have dinner, sometimes just cereal because it was fast. And then I would just start lesson planning and grading and getting ready for the next day's battle, ready to go in there, uh, you know, and so, just know you're gonna be more tired this year than you've ever been in your life. And that's good because you're like getting stronger as you do. So I remember there was a, there was a gal in Stacy and my group that we went through student teaching with. She had twin infants at home. I never knew what happened to her. I don't know if she actually stuck with teaching. I don't know how she did it. I don't, she made it through the program. God bless. So if you're a working mama or a working papa and you got littles at home, Oh, I am, I, I bow down to you. You are a, a award-winning teacher just for getting there. So yeah, I, I am super glad that I <laughs> got that student teaching done before I had the kids. Um, but you know, just know you're gonna be exhausted. It's coming. If it hasn't hit already, it's coming for you. Um, all right, number eight, over-prepare your lesson plans. Um, dead air is death to you as a student teacher. Um, it creates chaos with the kids if there's nothing to do, if there's like 10 minutes left at the end of your lesson and you don't have anything else planned, uh, things can kind of unravel quickly. Um, or the kids these days just get on their phones, which is such a teaching fail to me. Like if the kids are Snapchatting toward the end of your class, 
Womp, womp, womp. You didn't, you're not doing your job. So they're on their phones all the time. We can fill that 45, 50, 90 minutes, whatever it is, with really rich content. So you wanna have already copied ahead of time extra materials, extra activities, games, sponges to fill up that extra time. I'll link down there. I have several free ones um, in my TPT shop. Just grab them, make some photocopies because there will be a day where everyone just races through things faster than you planned. Or you have that one class that goes faster than the others um, just because they're really focused or they're really sharp or whatever their issue is. Uh, you need to be ready for them. So over plan, do way more than you think those kids are going to be able to get through. Number nine, <sighs> it's going to be hard because this one's hard. Solve your own problems. Like that's so mean, right? Like I'm a mentor teacher, but I, I also want to see that that you can handle it. Like it's a stressful thing that you're doing, and I want to see that you can solve it. So my like internal rule is you get to cry with me after school once per semester. And that's cool. Like I get it. I cry too. Um for sure. You're you're gonna cry during student teaching at some point. Um, but you don't get to come twice. Your mentor teacher is handling a lot of things already on her own or his own. Um, he doesn't need your emotional fractured, fracturedness, your emotional cracking to, to hold you together. Again, once is fine. Like we all cry, we all get there. But if you're like the weepy teacher, you're not gonna get hired. Like if you can't handle it, then you know they'll, they'll move on to the next candidate. So if you wanna cry twice, that's fine. Like there's some, <laughs> there was a year at community day school where I cried probably 17 times in one semester. I'll tell that story another time. I uh, wasn't student teaching either. I was like 10 years in, think about that. But um, you're gonna get your emotions like definitely riled up, but you know, cry in your car or even better, find a classmate in your student teaching group and that's your person. Have dinner tw like once every two weeks, um, have a glass of wine um, and cry on that person's shoulder if you need to. That's the appropriate place for that. But if every day you're in your mentor teacher's classroom crying after school, you're probably not gonna make it. So keep that in mind, like manage those emotions. You're gonna have some intense ones, but you gotta manage them. And then finally, number 10, you gotta be honest with yourself. This is just a sort of a life one. Um, is the school that you end up being placed at really where you want to launch your career at? And it's okay if the answer is no, it's totally fine. Um, you know, do your best to impress. Um, student teaching is sort of like a semester long job interview, um, if you want it to be. Um, it's definitely learning no matter what. Um, but if you don't like the environment, it's fine. There's a million schools out there of all kinds of different flavors. So, you know, maybe you need a charter school or maybe you need a private school or maybe you need a, a big traditional high school or maybe you need to be in a like a little like tiny middle school. I don't know. But just be honest with yourself and then don't apologize for where you want to be. Just go be there. Teaching is hard enough with the low pay the high expectations, the lack of funding for the stuff you need to do the job, and the crazy overcrowding that we have right now, that if you're doing all of that in a place that you don't really like, that doesn't really fit your personality, that's a disaster. Like, don't do that to yourself. So find a school, like just search inside yourself, what do you really want, and then go get it. Like, that's what you need to do. All right. Um, experienced teachers. I don't know if you're still with us, but if you made it to the end of this video, leave comments below. Help these new folks out. What else have I forgotten? What else do they need to know? Let's help our new people uh, survive, arm themselves for the storm that they're about to face with those rocky waters. Don't worry. It'll be fun. It'll be crazy, but you'll have a good time with it. All right, that's it for me. As always, like, subscribe, uh, leave a comment, tell a friend. Uh, I appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks. Bye. The neighbors just walked by and they're like, what is that lady doing? I'm talking to myself on my patio. <laughs> Bye guys.